I was actually in Shanghai very recently and I was shocked by just how many electric cars are on the roads. I mean, I shouldn't have been shocked because more than 50% of all cars sold in Shanghai this year were fully electric cars. In fact, more than 60%. It means the streets are much quieter, much less polluted. But it might not be long before, well, those same streets could be underwater, potentially, according to new research. China's Shanghai is sinking. As sea level rises faster than ever before, deltas are vanishing. And Shanghai's sinking threatens ports, trade, and the world's supply lines that have all been built on unstable ground. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And don't know about you guys, but in my recent trip to Shanghai and to southern China, what, stru what struck me the most was the amount of water everywhere. There is so many rivers, so much water coming from inland, and a lot of that water is apparently having an impact, not just the water from the ocean. According to new research, Shanghai is sinking faster than previously believed. Scientists from the UK, China, and the US published new research in Nature showing that global sea level rise since 1900 has been faster than in any other century in at least four millennia. According to the team's findings, the rise averages about 0.6 inches, that's about 1.5 millimeters every single year. This is caused mainly by ocean water expanding as it warms, but other compounding factors include the melting glaciers and polar ice sheets, adding more water. And yeah, like I said, there's just water everywhere and it's getting higher and higher. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. The global mean sea level ri rise rate since 1900 has exceeded any century over at least the past four millennia, the team said in their paper. Our analysis indicates that at least 94% of rapid modern urban subsidence is attributable to anthropogenic human-induced activities, with localized subsistence rates often exceeding global mean sea level rise, the team said. Interesting engineering says that Shanghai is sinking faster than first thought. If true, even if the land stays still, Shanghai would face increasing flood risks just from rising seas alone. And if you have storms, for example, like you know large swells coming in, well, that could make things very interesting. Beyond that, Shanghai is built on soft delta soil at the mouth of the Yangtze River, which naturally compresses over time. And the Yangtze River is one of the biggest rivers in the world. The team notes most of the sinking, though, around 94% is human-caused, mainly from pumping groundwater for factories, construction, and domestic use. In the 1960s, when water extraction peaked, the city was sinking about 3.93 inches a year. That's 10 centimeters every year. According to reports, over the past century, some areas have dropped more than a full meter, and that means the city is sinking much faster than the ocean is rising, significantly amplifying flood and storm surge risks. Now, one of the things you'll notice about Shanghai is there's a lot of electric cars there. And in fact, the main type of car bought in Shanghai now is electric. More than 50% of all sales this year have been fully electric cars. That could be a good thing when we start to see more and more floods in Shanghai because EVs can handle it much better than internal combustion cars. Other major Chinese cities like Shenzhen and Hong Kong are also in the Delta regions. These areas are vital economic and manufacturing hubs, so any flooding or land loss could disrupt global supply chains and also be a big problem for the inhabitants of those cities. Interesting engineering says that the same dynamic threatens other megacities built on deltas such as Jakarta, Manila, and New York. To help mitigate the risks, Shanghai has tightened groundwater regulations and started artificially recharging aquifers, which has slowed subsidence considerably. 
But the broader combination of rising seas and sinking land means long-term risks are growing. Subsidence of this kind has already caused billions of dollars in damages, with Shanghai alone losing over $3 billion between 2001 and 2020. And in fact, this is costing China billions of dollars a year. According to reports, China's total losses average $1.5 billion per year, rising seas from climate change and sinking land from overuse of groundwater are what is you know, causing this, these main problems, but the expenses are only going to rise. Some people think enormously. Even small increases at this point in sea level can now have big consequences, making flood control, water management, and coastal engineering critical to both China's economy and even to global trade stability as well. Centimeters of sea level rise will greatly increase the risk of flooding in Delta areas. These areas are not only important domestically, but they're also international manufacturing hubs. If coastal risks happen there, the global supply chain will be vulnerable. Deltas are great places. They're good for farming, fishing, urban development, and naturally draw civilizations to them. But they are really, really flat and prone to human-caused subsidence. So sustained sea level rise will eventually submerge them. And this could be a, a really interesting phenomenon. We might see in a thousand years from now, some cities could just really almost disappear. Does that mean that Shanghai will? Well, probably not. I expect the Chinese government will invest a very large sums of money to try and prevent this from happening. But who knows? Thanks for watching.